God is delivering someone. Anybody here who knowingly or unknowingly have gone to dark powers to get any kind of solution or people went on your behalf, I want to release you now. Listen carefully. Because he knows how hard it is. That's why the Bible says, let him that has an ear. That means it is possible that you don't have that ear. Son of man, he said, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correctly. You can see wrongly. Let's go to number four. Why do we pray? Why do we pray according to scripture? Number four. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Write it down please. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Don't worry wherever you can stand. Just find somewhere and stand. A platform for warfare and intercession. Give us Acts chapter 12. Let's study the early church. Acts chapter 12, please. It's a long reading, but um, the verse of emphasis will be verse 5, and then we continue. Now, please look up. That prayer is a platform for warfare. Now, um, when I say warfare, especially in Africa, Warfare means many things to many people. There are people who believe that warfare is some carnal confrontation of spirits in the flesh that is an ever continual process without victory. I don't believe that. And then others also believe that the concept of warfare is just some kind of Christian talk that does not exist. I also don't believe that. There is a healthy balance concerning the subject of warfare that must be communicated. Acts chapter 12. Look up please. Now, about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. So we are talking about a man here under the influence of wicked spirits to persecute the church. Please don't lose your focus. Don't lose your attention. Two. And he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. So James is dead now. Number three. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews. Look at this wicked man. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Okay. During the feast. Four. And when he had apprehended him. He put him in prison. And delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So he's about to destroy someone, the pillars of the church. Next verse. Peter, look at this. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made without season. And when Herod would have brought him forth, that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Can you imagine it? Aside from the fact that he's in prison, the two soldiers held him, he's tied with chains, and they're also sleeping close to him. So that if he moves and they wake up, they can say, where are you going to? He was bound with two chains, but the, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Next verse. And behold, the angel of the Lord. Wait till next week when I will show you the ministry of prayer and the angels. The angelic ministry that excel in strength. If you do not understand the ministry of angels in prayer and the warfare dimension of prayer, you will get into trouble. The Bible is full of the ministry of angels. In prayer, the angel of the Lord came upon him 
and a light shined in prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and the chains fell off from his hand. They are praying and praying correctly because Jesus had taught them how to pray. Remember, before now, they were not getting results. Now Jesus had mentored them. And the, the, the apostles now were mentoring the early church. So there was no confusion as to whether the prayer would be answered or not. And while they prayed, something was happening in the realm of the spirit. Because the Bible says that let it be done in the earth as it is in heaven. And so an angel came from heaven to make sure what is in heaven happens in the earth. He came to that prison and he said, God thyself, angels can speak. And bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. This is the angel. Next verse. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was in a vision. Look at this. He was already so used to visions. He didn't know whether it was real or it was a visionary experience. When they were past the first the second word they came to the iron gate which led to the city which opened of its own accord and they went out and passed through the street and forthwith the angel departed and said you can go now my brothers and my sisters look at this these are not parables can these things happen again why are they not happening if this is true and scripture cannot be broken that men pray and physical angels. Let me give you. Let me give you a story. I like teaching on these kinds of things. Listen. I have many many stories on this. Let me give you one of my. Okay. That would be the second or the third. Encounters with angels. In the body now. Not in visions. I was in Abuja. Um, one year. I can't remember. And then I got into a, a bus. And. I highlighted I was at Mararaba, you know, and my wallet fell and everything fell and the bus had gone. I was with one of my friends. And, you know, it was so frustrating for me. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I hope it would will, it will be when we we're trying to prepare for one of our crusades or so. And then everything had gone. And the town, it was busy. You would not even know which of the buses or who. Someone would have carried it. And... I pleaded with my friend. I said, please, you have to just get a bike and then go to maybe where the park is and then they'll begin to check. I stood there and I was just praying in the spirit. And I remember the scripture that just came, he shall put his angels charge over thee and all of that. Now I tell the truth and I lie not. I fear God. I was standing there and the next thing, a man is limping. Remember the story. A man is limping with my wallet and brings to me and says take and just turns and goes away and I'm standing there and I'm looking at this man what is your name who are you at least let me say thank you and after a while I, I cannot remember seeing the man again the first time we were going to hold our crusade in Joss we were there and quite honestly we were confused and we did not know what to do suddenly a stranger walks up to me and says get a bus and get a loud megaphone he said go around the city remember and do publicity i never saw that man again angels are real our carnality has reduced us to a point where we don't even have the eyes and the perception you will be you will be joking to think everyone standing here is a human being do you know i, I tell you the truth and i lie not there are many times I shared it. I started sharing it during the early days of Koinonia, but you notice I stopped. I stopped saying it for a reason. There are times that I would be ministering like this. And suddenly, you know, many things happen as a man of God when you are ministering. You cannot say everything. There are times that I'm standing here already and I'm having multiple visionary experiences while I'm ministering. It's training. With time, your spirit is seeking you. You understand it so you are not distracted. And there are many times when God opens my eyes now I see people, now not from the body, I now see the spirit man of people. And suddenly, you know in the realm of the spirit, you will know that it's an angel now. Because they excel in light. And suddenly you will check and you will find out that, ah uh ah, -uh, 
This person sitting down is not a human being. The moment they see me and we make contact, they will just stand up gradually and walk out. I've seen this thing many times when Koinonia started. I used to say it, but eventually I kept quiet because I don't want people to build their monuments. You know, people start to make all this uh, idolatry and the rest. So I understand what this scripture is saying. Listen, let me tell you, warfare is real. And it is important to be able to bet victory. James chapter 5 and verse 13. We pray because it is an instrument of warfare. What is warfare? Establishing the will of God in spite of the contentions of darkness. That's warfare. Engaging scripture. Engaging the mysteries of the kingdom in prayer to establish the will of God. Satan will never let your destiny go, not without a battle. Just because God said all things are yours, does not mean all things will come to you. Just because um, God said, oh, you'll be a great man, you'll be, he will attack you, he will attack your children, he will attack everything that can be attacked. I believe in warfare, when it is biblically engaged. I believe that any believer who sits down and allows his destiny to move by default is in trouble. He will never win in life. Are we together? Warfare and intercession. What is intercession? Standing in the gap for someone else. Standing in the gap for a territory. Making petitions to heaven on behalf of an individual, on behalf of a territory. Listen, do you know why God allowed for intercession? Because of this explanation I'm giving. Because assuming, for instance, the spirit of death is attempting to take my life this night and I do not have the faculty to discern. I can become a victim of it. And that means my destiny and all who are connected to me will be in trouble. So God, see, this is how it is. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a revelation of God's mercy. The mercy of God starts moving around that territory to find who has the discernment and the will to obey God. Do you understand? So it's like a cloud the Holy Ghost will come upon somebody in his room. He will shake up and say, God forbid, I need to sleep. The Holy Ghost will live quietly. Find another house. But somehow, he will just come to someone who just gets up and says something is wrong. He now say, pray. Pray in the Spirit. And while you are praying, he does not know why he's praying. And I do not even know him. But because he's in the body, his prayer life will now save me. That's why when we get to heaven, many people receive thank you for things. They say, well, what is that? He said, in 1999, remember one three days fast you did that you don't even know what it was for. That fast was what secured the man who would later become the president. But you will never know that it was your prayer. If Anna the prophetess did not intercede for Jesus, they would have killed him. Believe me. If Jesus could not die, the angel would not say he wrong. He was in the flesh. The only thing is that the body will not decay. Are we together? Anna the prophetess was praying. Imagine this kind of intercessor. She sacrificed her life since her husband died. See, I'm teaching you many things in this series. Because if Anna the prophetess were in our generation, and you saw Anna the prophetess and saw Apostle Joshua Selman. Anna the prophetess will bow to me and say, you are the great man of God and we are the quiet people. Whereas you do not know that the way things happen in the realm of the spirit, those that may be making the greatest impact may not be the Joshua Selmans and all of these people. As visible as we look, there will be one quiet mama somewhere that is the backbone behind our success that we may never know God gives this mama a mandate and say mama you have 30 more years to live and your assignment every day is to pray for someone called Joshua Selman where is he in the world you don't need to know him I may never know that the health of this ministry the health of my life primarily may be founded upon that deep intercessory ministry if you really find an intercessor somewhere, not just a, 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 a lazy person who just says I'm an intercessor, but a real intercessor, respect them. See, 
if I bless you, you see me, I prophesy to you. You will package, uh, uh, help those under the anointing. You will package offering and come and give me. Is that true? If I speak over your life, they can carry that message all around the world. People will watch the videos and see me speaking. They will open doors for me. But if I intercede for you, there is no man who will see me to say thank you. These are the people who are greatly prized in the spirit. Some of them are here. They don't even believe that they are in ministry. I just have the grace for intercession. Do you know there are times that I'm sleeping and it's as if they are soaking me inside hot water. I know somebody somewhere is shouting on heaven on me. I can't can say, allow me to sleep small now. There are times I know it's prayer band. That fire is coming from prayer band Tuesday. <laughs> there are times I know that individuals are just praying. They pray for Jesus. The Bible never said Anna the prophetess stopped praying after the dedication. She just said, my eyes have seen the consolation of Israel. Intercession is powerful. Listen to me. Don't sit back and allow the devil destroy your loved ones. I shared with you the story about my mom. One time that I saw what I saw. You must learn to pray. Some of you are not only lazy spiritually. You are responsible for the pain of many people. This is why sometimes when God is quarreling people, you think you are innocent. He will come and say, you are part of the reasons why these people are not doing well. Oh God, why? I put a burden on you to pray one time and you just carelessly said, it's not my business. There are selfish believers until God. That's why God will use the face of someone you love. It's not that something is wrong with that person. That's the only way. It's not always demons. It is the only way to wake you up to pray. Because if you saw another person, your selfishness will not allow you to stand up. 